my name's Sam and you're watching my channel So That Sparkle with Sam and those of you that have watched me before might be wondering where we are. <laughs> so welcome, welcome if you're new and if you like what you're going to hear then please um, give me a like and subscribe if you haven't already. As I said my name's Sam and I kind of going to talk to you about my sewing journey. Wow! <laughs> so I'm in my spare room today um, now, I normally vlog in my spare room when I do my Sewing Bee synopsis, which has just finished. So if you have not watched, if you kind of wanted to watch the Sewing Bee uninterrupted until you kind of got to know who the winner was, um, but you'd quite like to know what I thought of the Series 10, then head on over and watch those. I've done 10 episodes and then the finale I have just finished recording and I had an absolute blast. I really, really enjoyed that series um, and got some lovely comments from you guys. And I'm just looking forward to doing it again next year. So the reason I've come on today is this is my Friday Sews and it's Saturday, <laughs> but I um, was working yesterday. So I there was no way that I could get it done, but I didn't want to kind of completely stop um, and then go and carry on till next week and because then another week would go by and because I've been doing the sewing bee synopsis I kind of feel like I've lost touch of where I am and what I've showed you and what I haven't showed you and I'm kind of feeling a little bit lost so I have actually got some sorting to do to do some proper makes videos of things that I know I definitely haven't shown you and a few other bits and pieces but I just thought I'd do a general what I've been sewing right now catch up and a few things that I've promised to show you so yeah I'm in my spare room on the other side and this is my Lego collection behind me. As you can see it's mainly Star Wars <laughs> and spacey stuff um, but um, I love Lego. <laughs> Something that you maybe didn't know about me. I love Lego, my husband loves Lego, my kids love Lego. If we have got kind of a family thing going on or it's someone's birthday they, they get a set of lego and we tend to build it all together and yeah and because you know lego should be displayed this is my lego room <laughs> so there you go <laughs> so the first thing that i want to share with you is i was going to do a separate video for this one and then i thought actually it's going to be a fairly short video if i do a separate video um, but I did want to show you all and you have, if you follow me on Instagram, you've probably seen it already. So it is my sequined sparkly bomber jacket and I absolutely love it. Now I will be putting some footage up of me making, um, sewing and wearing it up coming up so you can see but I just thought I'd give you some of the details because I've had lots of people asking me so first of all where I got all my materials from so I got all my materials from the lovely Tamlin at first for fabrics and um, yeah and it was it was lovely actually because as soon as I saw the episode in sewing bee where they'd made the it was I hadn't actually seen the episode I'd seen the prequel to it I knew it was going to happen I kind of knew what I wanted to do so I did my normal kind of search fabrics and first of fabrics seemed to be the one that had everything that I needed all in one go and I do love a one-stop shop so I got this lovely rainbow zip you need a open-ended zip for the bomber jacket and I have to say, I found Open Ended Zips um, kind of a bit hit and miss for quality in some of the places that you go to. But this one for First Fabrics is absolutely fantastic and definitely made all the difference. And as you can see, I bought another one. I bought two. Um, so I bought one that I put in the bomber jacket and I've got another one for another project um, because they were such good value. Um, and then there was the lining fabric. So the lining fabric is this gorgeous spot. So I will put everything down below. I don't know whether they've still got everything in, but I will put it down below. And um, when you're using a lining for a bomber jacket, obviously you need something that's going to be a little bit sil silky so you can get your arms in. And I knew that the sequin mesh was just on a mesh. 
So I wanted something that was going to look good underneath it and look good with it. And I just thought that this was the perfect job. I also needed something that was going to coordinate to make the zip placket because you're supposed to make the placket in the outer fabric. Now, because this placket goes onto the other zip panel, um, I cheated. <laughs> And I did it with the fabric that was going to be easier to sew on than the sequin fabric. So um, that was the main alteration that I did really because it was a mood pattern pattern that I went for in the end. It's called the Avlia um, and I did have another option. So I have got this one, the new look 6545 in my stash and this was the one I originally was going to use because I knew I had this in my stash um, but when I got everything out of the packet and looked at all of the pattern pieces um, there was there was kind of quite a few bits to it that I thought oh actually in the sequin fabric that might be a little bit tricky to do actually now because i adapted the other move pattern i could have done exactly the same things on this pattern but if i'm totally honest when i did a little search on the patterns the mood pattern bomber jacket just seemed to be a nicer shape um and as it turns out i love the shape on me i think it's i think it's really really nice i think it's really flattering because i'm shorter and a little bit thicker in the middle sometimes when you know with bomber jackets they can make me look a little bit dumpy but this one doesn't so um so yes yeah, so I'm actually really glad that I went for that one in the end so I made a straight size 12 and the alterations that I made were instead of cutting the back so the lining I cut all of the pattern pieces exactly as they said but for the outer instead of cutting the back panel in two pieces I cut it on the fold but Sorry, I took a centimetre off the fold line for the seam allowance. And um, suddenly thinking, did you add a centimetre? I don't think you did. No, I took, I basically just folded it over a centimetre so that allowed for the seam allowance. Um, and also I did want to make this a little bit smaller because the out, this outer mesh is a little bit stretchy. So I knew that this was going to be a little bit roomier than the inside. The ribbing I used, I just had this black ribbing in my stash um, and it was absolutely perfect. And I used that at the bottom and the top. Um, and then I followed a fantastic tutorial online, um, which I will link down below. It was really, really easy to use. And I just omitted the zip pocket in the sleeve because no, there was absolutely no way in the world that I was going to put a zip in here. Um, so, yeah. And I have to say, I was a little bit worried when I first started. I was like, oh, well, I'm going to make a sequin bomber jacket. And then I was like, oh, committed now. <laughs> but it was it was easier than I thought it was going to be. It was a challenge. It wasn't an easy, you know, certainly not a beginner pattern. Um, it was a challenge, but it was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. And I really, really enjoyed doing it. And the way it kind of all magically with the lining and you turn it all through and everything's the right way around. It was like, yay, it was a real yay moment. And I, I enjoyed the challenge and I really enjoyed the sew. I did do a couple of make it me. So on the on the um, ribbing on the bottom, I put beautifully. So these are the um, Vicky made um, labels because um, because I made it for the sewing bee. I wanted a reminder that, and obviously they were Vicky's labels, and yeah, so it just seemed appropriate. Um, I didn't do a label inside because I don't really like anything like that. Um, and yeah, and it was just a really, really lovely, enjoyable make. So a couple of things, um, questions that people ask me. How many needles did you break, Sam? None. <laughs> I didn't break any needles. I actually found sewing the sequins um, fairly straightforward. I went slowly. 
I didn't speed through anything. I didn't do it in the three hours that they suggested you could do it for in the sewing bee. I just went nice and slow. Um, when I went over any anything that I thought was a bit tricky, I just used my the, the wheel and just kind of went over nice and slowly. And yeah, I didn't I didn't break any needles <laughs> at all. Um, one of the last things that you do when you kind of turn it up and you sew um the collar piece because you kind of go in i did so i machine sewed the top part but i did hand sew the bottom part and that was basically because going through all of those bits around the zip and with the sequins um i was worried that getting all of that bulk under the sewing machine with the sequins i was asking for trouble <laughs> so i did hand sew a little bit that but you know it didn't take me long um, and I hand sewed some of the lining as well for the same reason. And again, you know, I quite enjoyed doing it. I did, you know, it was some, I don't do a lot of hand sewing. So having that hand sewing job was actually quite nice and I did really enjoy it. So yeah, so that was my bomber jacket project and I really enjoyed it. And I must thank everyone for such lovely comments because I really did get some really lovely comments and I'll just show a picture as me dressed up for the final as well. And this was kind of what I wanted, that kind of, I knew Esme was gonna do something sparkly and spectacular and I wanted to do something sparkly. Um, yeah, and I think she probably beat me this year. So I'm gonna have to up my game next year for my sparkly jacket. Oh, the answers on a postcard, what could I make for next year? So yeah, so that was the, my main makes. I have been making quite a few makes while I've been doing the sewing bee. And as I said, there'll be a separate video for that. But um, I just thought I'd do a bit of a live catch up really. So I've just been really busy. Um, as you know, I've been working at Carolyn Rose, which is a fabric shop and sewing school in Leamington Spa, which is where I live. Um, and I love it. <laughs> um, and yeah, and but I've taken on some extra responsibilities and some extra hours because you know life is sometimes you just need to do a little bit extra so I've taken on um, a couple of extra classes so I will be sewing um, the Clio next week for four weeks which I'm really excited about because I love I love sewing Tilly and the Buttons Clio and um, so I'll be teaching some lovely ladies to do that and I've taken on some extra children's classes because it's the summer holidays so so I've mainly been doing, been busy doing that and that just means a lot of prep. But I have had, I have also had time to sew because that keeps me calm. I do want to bring you a new whips for those of you that don't understand uh, work in progress or UFOs as some people like to refer to them. So I did confess on a recent virtual sewing room that I had over 36 whips. And actually, on reflection, when I've gone in and opened all of my whip cupboards and my whip doors and my whip, whip handles, it's probably a few more than that. Depending on what you classify as a whip. So, yeah. So there will be a <laughs> vlog coming out on that. I have actually this morning I watched Angela's from Devon Thread Tales. I watched hers and I know we've been chat. We've both been chatting about our whips as well. With the and you know Rachel from the French scenes look overlooking horrified, <laughs> um, and I love the way that Angela did hers. So I might um, I might try I might see how I can do mine that will make it a little bit different maybe. So yeah, so that's that's something I'm going to work on, um, and then yeah. So my my plans for this week so today is saturday as i said um simon's away this week he's had to go and look after some family stuff so um i have got today and tomorrow pretty much on my own which means i can sew so i should probably be getting on with some whips but in true sam style i have cut out new things but for a good reason so um, at the fabric shop this week, we've had some new fabrics in. I don't always show like new fabrics, but um, because I have, they have come home with me. I have bought these with my own money, by the way. I have one piece of fabric that um, Carolyn 
has kindly gifted to me, but the rest I have bought myself. Um, <laughs> and I absolutely love them. And they're not really the, nor the fabrics that I would normally go for, but I love them so much that I know that if I just put them away in my stash, they will just stay there and they won't be they won't be used. So I want to use them as quickly as possible. So they've all been washed. So Brogan from the Sewing Bee 2022, I believe, is the Crafty Pie. And she has come out with her new fabric collection. And at Carolyn Rose, we have got some of her fabrics in her collection. And I picked up this one. It's a bit wrinkled. It's just come out. It's washed, but I haven't ironed it yet. And it's as you can see, it's this gorgeous, bright, and I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, well, this is more like the other Sam, Sequin Girly Sam, what she would wear. And yeah, you're absolutely right. But I just, there's something about it that I really kind of like and thought, although it's not really my colours, I'm going to give it a go and see because, you know, it's gorgeous, isn't it? It's beautiful. And who doesn't love a rainbow? So, you know, and um, I've got three metres of this. Um, and I was a bit umming and ahhing. I was thinking some kind of jumpsuit, but then I realised that I, it wasn't really the jumpsuit that I wanted. I wanted it to go over the top of something. So I have been watching Shelley from Willow Tree Green. I believe if I've got that wrong, I'll put it down below. And she makes a lot of these and it's the peppermint magazine barden dress i'm sorry i've only got these on pdf so i'm having to show you pattern pieces rather than pattern envelopes i do apologize and um yeah so it is the barden dress and it's kind of like a, she wears it like an overdress and i thought oh actually that would be really really nice because i think what i really want with this is you know floaty floaty um, and I've looked at it um, and although it's a fairly simple make, I don't want to cut into the good stuff and then find out that actually it doesn't fit me. So <laughs> I've gone into my deep dive stash and I've got this from uh, So Hayley Jane subscription box that I really wanted to make in something and I'm going to do a hopefully wearable twirl in this because I think it's the type of dress that I'll wear anyway um, and these colours I will definitely wear um, so I'm going to have a go this weekend of making it in this and then if it work, everything works out beautifully this will be cut out for the following week so that's the first thing that I really want to get sewn up done this well this week and next week if that makes sense um, and I have got this gorgeous, lovely, stretchy cotton that I bought from Penny Fabrics. Now, I need to blame Adam from Adam Sews for this because Adam has got me into Penny Fabrics. I didn't really know very much about Penny Fabrics until um, something kind of popped up and um, and Adam was, was chatting about something. And then I've got I've recently got a bit addicted because she sells some really lovely haberdashery and some really lovely fabrics. So I've got this in a bit of a mystery bundle, but look how well, sorry, <laughs> that was my chair. Look how well it goes. I need to find the purple bit, don't I? Look how well it goes with this here. So yeah, I think it looks lovely and I think it'll look nice underneath. So I might make myself some kind of little top that will go underneath the Barden dress so that I can kind of wear it, not just in the summer, but I can wear it in those springy days when you want to feel like summer. Does that make sense? But you need something underneath. So, so yeah, so that's that one. And then the other fabric that I have um got from Carolyn Rose is this one now this is my colours <laughs> and oh my goodness I love this now I've got two meters of this one 
I think it's absolutely stunning. Uh, both of these are viscose, by the way. Um, they feel like a really good quality viscose. So I thought, again, influenced by another one of my sewing friends, the lovely Marie. And I think she is so Marie so on Instagram, but I met her through the virtual sewing room. And she's got me into um, sew to grow patterns. Um, and I have got this pattern here, which is the Carolina Klotz. Um, now, I don't know whether she has made this one, um, but she has, um, she's really, really got me into the pattern. So I have actually bought quite a few and have got quite a funny story about that. But I might share that for another, I might say that for another day because this video is going on a bit. <laughs> <laughs> so yes so I again I was like don't really want to sew into the good stuff just yet I have this which I got on a sewing swap table quite a while ago um, which is the same kind of weight fabric so I thought I'm going to make them up in this my measurements put measurements put me bang on a tw well between a 10 and a 12 um yeah if i was making a dress i would be a 12 if i'm making the trousers i'd be a 10 so i think i'm going to do a straight size 10 um and yeah and make it from these and then hopefully if these work out I did think about making the short version first, but actually I think I'd probably wear the trousers more. So, and I've got plenty of this fabric, so I'm gonna go for the trousers, going for the full clots. And then if that works out, I'll make it in this. Wow, so that's a lot, isn't it? I feel like I've got a lot of plans, but I've got two whole days, so I should be able to get quite a bit of that done. And then the last fabric is this one, which is just, very retro and very me um and this is actually a jersey so and it's oh it's on a lovely backing it is beautifully stretchy it's washed really nice um and I've got a meter and a half of this um and I just want to make myself another closet core t-shirt because the t-shirt the closet core t-shirts that I've got I wear pretty much all the time and I wear them to death um so I just want to make myself another one um so yeah so that's that and I probably I probably will have a few scraps left over and my daughter's birthday is coming up and she loves these type of fabrics so I might and she um she loves my face wipes so what I might do is if I've got any scraps of this left I'll make her a little set of face wipes out of this so that'll be a nice thing to do and actually I find the jersey I mean it's always nice to do face wipes in cotton but the jersey ones are sometimes just nice and soft um and I've got some stretchy terry fabric so if you you know obviously this will work really nicely for those and I find they give you a really good facial so I will be making the extras into birthday presents for my daughter so look at me multitasking isn't that amazing <laughs> so yeah so that's basically my plans so that is my friday sews that is what i've got up to so you've had a little bit of life a little bit of what i've been up to a little bit of makes and a little bit of plans so i think i've done tick 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 and i've realized that i've forgotten <laughs> and i forget every time what I am wearing. So I am wearing a recently made, I'll put a picture up of me here wearing it where you can see it properly. I'm wearing uh, an Avenir jumpsuit from Friday Pattern Company, which I absolutely love. Although when I woke up this morning, it looked like quite bright, but it wasn't quite as hot as it is now and it's getting quite warm. So it may be shorts and t-shirt time <laughs> in a minute, but I do love wearing this. Um, it's one that I've made quite recently um and i make it again in a straight medium but i do add 
into the waistband and the reason that I uh, sorry into the waistband I don't add into the waistband I add into the bodice piece so that the bodice piece hangs over the waistband and the reason that I do that is because I find it's much more flattering for my figure and it's just much more forgiving looking um, and it covers the mum tum basically so um so yeah um so i think i for this one i think i added three inches but i have added up to six inches before depending on the type of fabric and kind of how flowy it is um yeah and this fabric was again from the lovely what vicky made um from the lovely vicky from the sewing bee and i just i honestly i can't recommend her fabrics highly enough I know like her prints might not be for everyone and that, you know, the style might not be for everyone, but I, I think that they are beautiful, but the quality of the fabrics and particularly this, particularly this one, this tensile one that she did is just gorgeous. It washes so nicely and it feels so lovely to wear. I just love putting it on. Um, it's a real joy. So yeah, so that's what I'm wearing. So have I done tick, 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 tick? Yes, I have. I will also be doing one other thing, one other thing this weekend, but it's a secret because I have got a collaboration coming up with a the most beautiful, lovely lady. So I will also be doing that this weekend. So you take care of yourselves now. Have a lovely weekend. I hope you have loads of lovely time to sew and don't forget to sparkle. See you really soon.